Welcome to the Mechanical Room. The mechanical, the mechanical, the mechanical. A Centrotherm production focusing on all things in and around the HVAC industry. And now, your hosts, Michael Sakaris and Matthew Price. Children of all ages and safe venting enthusiasts, and that includes Aiden Dibblebiss and all the rest. That's one of our biggest uh, uh, venting enthusiasts, safe <laughs> venting not, enthusiasts. I really hope that it is working for him and his Tinder bio. Uh, you'll have to fill us in over there. We will is send that you. Is like a, a, a thing to, to uh, be a venting enthusiast? Uh, it is on, on. It is for his Tinder. That's okay. for sure. All right. Uh, I will contact customer service, and I will have a carton of uh, Central Siren sent out to Ooh. you, Aiden. Welcome to. The Halloween, the October special edition of the Mechanical Room. Michael Scaris, how are you doing today? I, I'm doing wonderful. It's, uh, you know, nice crispy air outside at fall. My second favorite season. Spring is my favorite. Oh, is it? it I would is, think it's it? a, as a Mediterranean man, summer would be right up your alley. Uh, no, you know, I just like the, you know, the fresh, the vibrance of, of spring. Well, it's going to be probably even you know more temperate than than typical in uh, in Kefalonia, where you're headed next I, week. I am heading next week to the homeland, so it'll be nice to to get there. Uh, painting and scraping and repairs are in my uh, in my uh, short term future. So, so you are staying at your childhood home. Correct? I am indeed. Uh, I'm going there to take care of some stuff, some paperwork, and work on the house a little bit. Fantastic. Uh, are you? Will you see Themis? Maybe. I will certainly see uh, Themi, and I will probably have dinner at his place uh, and uh, kind of hang out in town. I'm so and drinking my coffee and yeah. uh, doing my email. Uh, that little avenue uh, down there. Uh, what is the name of that street? Uh, I don't know the name of the street, oh. but it's Aia Ephemia is the, yes. uh, the little port town. Which is Saint. Ephemia, yeah, right? Saint Ephemia. Yeah, yes. I speak a little, a little Greek. Bit, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. impressed. Off of, Google, off of Google Maps, of course. Very good. Um, I'm very lucky to have been on that little avenue there and had some Wonderful of that place. gelato and eat at, was it the Poseidon, I want to say? At the Poseidon, yes. yes. I should send this to Themi. Just, oh, uh, my God. I, I, he, my wife and I do a, uh, a Themistocles impression all the time. <laughs> we do it all the time. And what he, is the impression? It's why not? Why not? Why not? Which I don't think is necessarily unique to him. Uh, no, that's it's, kind of the attitude of the island. Yes, there. It's yes, whatever. Indeed. Why not? Uh, we always say that now uh, okay. because it is. A, I like to embody the why not. Uh, you know, lifestyle perspective, right? Yes, you do, so, especially around tomatoes. <laughs> yes, indeed. Which we'll get into a little bit later with our guest, who is Adam Gordon. Known uh, to one and all from uh, the Gordon Bot Plumbing account on Instagram, he does a podcast with Terrence called uh, Strictly Talking Shit, and they talk a lot of shit. That's true. They do. Um, both of us have been a guest on that program. Uh, I was a call in, uh, you know, uh, in the middle of uh, the Greek Fest. Uh, yeah, with my kids dancing, which kind of speaks to how comfortable they are doing the media. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, you know, it sure. is, it is, I mean, here, I mean, I, you know, I don't want to say that this is like official, but we've got the, you know, the mics and the, and the arms and, you know, we go through the green screen process and the whole nine yards. And, you know, I mean, we record it ahead of time. Um, their media savvy lends itself very nicely to, to Inst go live. Instagram yeah, live, to go live yeah. which is a, uh, which is a whole other ball of wax and also does provide something that I, I do really like, which is interaction with comments and, yeah, you know, absolutely. Instant feedback, and, and, and that and that's how I got on. They were talking about like HR issues of some sort, and you know, documentation, and, and they're like, any manufacturer out there, and I just, and there I was, live. So they 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 bowed to your tutelage. They wanted to know, uh, you. I wouldn't go that far. Well, they, I mean, you certainly uh, have a relationship with Terrence. I have, I, I'm a little and, older and have some uh, vast, uh, a little bit more vast of an experience when it comes to those things. Certainly, certainly, and that's why they turned to you. Um, I don't recall why I went on the show just to talk shit, I guess. I forget. That's there must have been some perspective. I think maybe we had just announced Miami, perhaps. Yes, okay. that's what it was. We had just announced the Squid Games uh, Part Du, and the topic was industry events. I think now, – now this is coming back to me. The, uh, the tomatoes have uh, obviously taken effect. Um, they, they, uh, they had just gotten back, I want to say, from a Navian – 
trip to California together, something along those lines. Maybe maybe not even Navient. I don't remember, but they were they were somewhere on a manufacturer boondoggle type thing where they were getting a little bit of training, but also riding go karts or going to the Dodgers game or whoever the hell knows what that you know what it was. So we were talking about industry events, and naturally we have one of the more interesting ones sure. uh, coming in February. That's it, and uh, there might be a little bit. There's some hints. Uh, and some some discussion of that in the interview uh, that comes next here uh, with with Adam. We are pleased to to uh, to to chat with him a little bit about this too. And Don't spoil it. You have to stay tuned. He seemed a little excited. So a little bit. Yes. A lot of it. Yes, indeed. So, uh, what are your kids being for Halloween this year? Uh, you know, it's kind of funny because my son, you know, is still not into spooky movies, and he has a thing. Uh, where he does not like the scream movies, you know, like the ghost. Yeah, ghost, ghost, face. Think, ghost face. They call it ghost face. I think it's ghost face. Okay. So for some reason, every time he sees it, it like freaks him out. Uh, and uh, so what is my daughter doing? <laughs> She's ghost face. <laughs> and, and he, very antagonistic big sister move right uh, there. Yes, very much so. And so my son is, you know, he likes, you know, his uh, Nerf gun. He's being a, like a like an army dude, you know. He's got like a tactical vest. He's got like camo cut off gloves and he's got his i don't know where this came from uh it's just been army military yeah, yeah. Guy, so uh you know, so i'm gonna put the you know some of the tactical you know from hvac tactical the the patches, the patches. i'm gonna stick them to his ah. to his vest so he's gonna be an hvac tactical army guy there you so go ben just for you <laughs> that's amazing um what would be their favorite candy to obtain from your your generous Ooh, neighbors so, uh, and, and yours too yeah so i'm a reese's peanut butter cup guy all the way uh that's kind of the go-to and milka oh well that but that castle wide that's a brand yeah. not a type yes milka oreos for those of you who, don't, who have not tried it yeah good. milka products are just in general are delicious yeah. you know we we love the little like uh the little, the little round ones that have like the cookie in them they're kind of yeah, like yeah. kind of like twix but they're circular yeah and then also there's like the butter biscuit ones that no, have those like are the good. bottom yeah, coat yeah. of them and whatever yeah, they're milka's <laughs> great products my wife loves um you know like uh, strawberry and chocolate together, you know, like a cheesecake that has like that kind of. Yeah. I, I don't really like the fruit. The, I don't and the like chocolate. the fruit in the chocolate. No, I don't. That flavor profile just doesn't do it for me. So no, Milka, Milka does have like a bunch of those like strawberry chocolate yeah. kind of combinations. Those ones don't do it for me at yeah. all. Um, the round ones and the uh, you know the biscuits. Hazelnut, hazelnut's good. Yeah, that's good. So for my uh, for my son, he's a pure Hershey's. Uh, you know, per just, plain, just plain Hershey. Oh. That's it. Just the stick. You know, the little sticks. Or the bar where he breaks them. Uh, and my daughter is a uh, Kit Kat. Kit Kat. Okay, those are all classics. Yep. I was having, I was chatting the other day with, uh, I think I was at Trivia at the Beer Garden. And the question was about what candy did Bart Simpson represent for a very long time? Do you recall? I do it was, not. It was very big. Oh, nobody better lay a finger on my... Butterfinger. Yes. Yeah, How do you feel about that. those? Uh, you know, I'm okay with Butterfingers. I'll eat them. I'll occasionally crave one. But it's not like a... I gotta go get a Butterfinger. Okay, because I feel like I'm in the minority because I love Butterfingers. Is it because of The Simpsons? No, or is you it know I don't. Bart? No, it came much later than that. Um, when those those that ad campaign was like in the '90s, yep, and I don't I remember think, that. I don't know if my taste buds were mature enough to enjoy like toffee at that point, mm -hmm. whatever. That's I think, what they're going with Heath bars. Yeah, well, I mean they're kind of similar. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean Butterfingers like a like a like a bar of toffee, yeah. like but peanut buttery but toffee, peanut buttery. and it's more like crackly. I don't know. It, it kind of collapses. It's not it's not chewy like yeah, like yeah. toffee traditional. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, much more like manufactured or like phony or, or inorganic, still, if you will. Still good. They are delicious. They're more, they're my favorite. So something I do. Uh, this is a, a, a strange uh, Mike Sakaris fact. The when my son has, we have a bunch of the Hershey, just the bars, and then uh, Peter Pan peanut butter with honey. The oh, one that that's yes, yes. it's got honey mixed into it. Sure. It's like the old commercials where you take the stick of chocolate and the peanut butter. I just take a you know a bar and I just spread that peanut butter on it. So I make my own uh, Reese's peanut butter cups. Yeah, that sounds really good, actually. Yeah, I excellent. mean, I also am a fan of Hershey. Uh, you know, Central Pennsylvania bona fides run deep in my in my true. family, of course. And uh, I've been to. Have you ever taken a kid to Hershey Park? Uh, my wife took my daughter to Hershey Park while I was away once, and my son was somewhere. I don't remember where he was. So they went. Actually, no, I there? was home with my son and my daughter was taking some kind of pennsylvania ballet dance company okay you know immersion class and when they were in pennsylvania they went to hershey park i've never been it's uh fascinating one of the things that is it's a real 
five cents experience over there, so to speak, because as soon as you start wandering up, I really wonder if it's the actual factory, which I can't imagine is actually on the grounds there, but the whole place smells like chocolate. Uh, I would love it. Yeah. I do have from that trip that my wife went to a pajama bottom with the Hershey's logos all over it. Maybe and, and still, I got to take a picture. Maybe you can insert it. <laughs> it's still in rotation. Uh, it's still in rotation. Okay. It's still in good shape. <laughs> It's fantastic. Uh, maybe uh, maybe you can wear you that. You learned a lot of things about me today. Yeah, we, <laughs> this is immediately just candy talk the whole time. Yes. Um, I just had something I had never seen before from the Central Therm Joel Bucks Food Emporium over there. Uh, it was like a Reese's peanut butter cup, but instead of peanut butter, it was like fake marshmallow, you know, stuff. You know, it was kind of like, a, it wasn't, it was a little, not crunchy exactly. In the vending but, machine? Uh, you know, in the yeah, in, the, the, in the, the shelving. Yeah. 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 It was. Uh, yeah. I, I don't even oh, know. I what it, it was a candy I had never seen before. Was it good? But I like baked marshmallow, or I mean, I guess all marshmallows kind of. Big. I don't. Know. I don't even know how that's made. It's oh. like whipped sugar, basically. Uh, right? Yeah. But so, uh, I will say, you know, when the we had the regional team in in Albany uh, a couple of weeks ago now. We did. And uh, you know, we I I'm heavy on the snacks. I'm, I snack all day. <laughs> Uh, and I bought I just I was walking down the grocery store and I was like, wow, do you remember what I bought? So you had of, Milano cookies. That, that's you. The ring dings. Oh, ring dings. Yes, they were very popular. They, I did. I ate a pack of ring dings. They were that that hit the it, spot. It took me back to you know unwrapping a brown paper bag and taking out like a like a turkey and cheese sandwich that my mom made for me and, and then a, like a thing of ring dings, thing of ring dings there. Me. Why are we here to talk about candy yeah. and, and Hershey's? It's, it's Halloween. So it's, what what's going know. on in the mechanical room today? Well, we uh, aforementioned tattooed tomato harvester uh, Adam Gordon, the Gordon Bot Plumbing um, on Instagram, a man who is uh, got a varied resume. He does. I did not know that he uh, started a new era. I did not either. A very interesting, I guess, clothing brand, yeah, sports, 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 sports hats and things yeah. like that. So that's kind of fascinating for him yeah. to then go and get an education on how to do plumbing stuff. And now he's a top installer, top tech, and um, you know, kind of a right the commercial side. Of of the business where he's at? Yeah, dispatching his crew and, and the whole nine yards for the Orella group. Yes. And, uh, you know, and then also being a man about town. Kind of like Umbrella. Yes, that's what he said. Yes. Well, I pronounced it like it was, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, Latin. Yes. Um, the Orella group. But no, it's the Orella group. Um, but, uh, you know, so, but now he's, of course, also a prominent man about town in terms of online content and you know obviously we mentioned the podcast already but he participated in the modern hydronic summit just a couple of days ago part of that boiler build you know we didn't cross paths with him although we tried to meet up while we were in frankfurt at the ish show so he was over there too so a world traveler yep. uh a man who's fond of the maple leafs and um and baltimore and ravens ravens libations tattoos very very wide range of conversation that we had with him and uh you know and another marizano good Tomatoes. tomatoes. Yes, indeed. I'm, I, you know, actual tomatoes. I really like plum tomatoes. Those are probably my favorite too. Oh, uh, you know, I like, you know, I like salad. the little like flavor bombs, the little tiny ones. Like grape tomatoes. Yeah, I like those. Yeah, those They're are easy good. to just snack the, on. So, I mean, we with we, Hershey's. We do a lot. So, back to to Greece to bring it all full circle. Right, my when when we were there, we bought like. You know, a garbage bag full of uh, like uh, oregano. Okay. Um, you know, we have a lot of it still. You know, so now it's like a year and a half later. We still, still have. Good. It's dry. Oh, it's, yeah, it's it perfect. Oh my god, it's so aromatic. It's so amazing. So we eat Greek salad a lot. Yeah. And obviously, tomato is a very uh, prominent, fun fundamental, yeah. uh, you know, seminal ingredient in a Greek salad. And I, you know, qu you know, quarter or you know, kind of cut the little like slices onto it. Yeah, wedges it. almost. Yeah, wedges exactly. Yeah. And you know, I mean, that's kind of like a. Not exactly a plum tomato, but one of the more traditional round yeah, ones. Yeah, kind of the heirloom the round Yeah, tomatoes, exactly. Yeah. I mean, and those are good. And um, I mean, so those work good in salad. It's funny, tomatoes, it's it's by what you need, right? Like sure. if you're putting a tomato on a sandwich, you can need like like one of those beef steak ones that like kind of yeah. like cut big slices. Cherry tomatoes are a different thing than um, grape tomatoes, plum tomatoes. On the vine ones, those on are the ones that are like so red in the store yeah. sometimes. You know? So uh, let me ask. Yeah. Uh, last month we uh, we did not do a show us your pipe because we had just so much going on and it was a full episode. Uh, we do want to show us your pipe this month. We're doing a very special show us your pipe, shall we? Let's do that. Sakara 
this top favorite, favorite section of the of the program. But we're the, gonna spice it up a bit this time. We are. It's a whole other situation here. Typically, uh, what do we do typically, Mike? Uh, typically, we do show us your pipe is kind of a you know my favorite part of the podcast, where we recognize an installation, a, a well done installation, uh, done by a pure tradesman professional. We highlight the install, we highlight the products, not just ours, but a lot of the other things around uh, that job. The, and the it, diamond plate, ideally. The diamond plate is LED, always- LED lights. LED and diamond plate adds a little uh, extra flavor. A and we always try to recognize the installing contractor and we send them out a uh, swag pack to recognize the work that they did. That's what we do. We do. And this time around, it's a completely different story. This is a show us your pipe kind of contest. Actually, it's more like FedEx your pipe context. Yes. Uh, a little bit here. So what, what we're looking for now is some of this kind the of- reverse of that. Some actually. of this cruddy looking uh, PVC stuff. If you come across discolored, sagging, busted, um, sloppily glued, brown, you know, purplish, yeah, uh, disjointed, et cetera, et cetera. Just you know, the kind of stuff that you are removing from an installation in order to put high efficiency venting in. Please, please post it. Send us uh, photos so we can take a look at it, and um, you know, tag us on Instagram as well. We will we'll share save, it. Save um, those, uh, save those pieces, because what we want is. We want you to uh, send them to us. We, we are doing a lot of work with code bodies these days. Uh, we, we, and we find that it's really, um, you know, obviously venting is a, and most HVAC stuff is very tactile. Feeling, seeing, you know, smelling in some cases uh, is very, is way more instructive than a video, than a photograph, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, thank you first and foremost to Charles Buddy Felt, who um, is, is uh, you know, always, uh, you know, he's, he's, on our, he's on the team. So he sent us a couple of things he already. He came across a, a really, really bad install yeah. where the, the pipe, the PVC pipe, had browned and almost burnt. Yeah, it was it was torched at one and, end of it. Yeah, and uh, he showed us a picture, and he's like, "Hey, you guys want it?" And we're like, "Hey, you know, as a matter of fact, we could probably put that to use." Yeah. So he cut out a section. He sent it to us. We actually had it at the ICC show last week, and it garnered a lot of attention from uh, code uh, code officials. Yeah, it's very instructive, as we said, right? Uh, do so, we have a picture to show? Um, I probably have one, yes. Okay, so here it is. Yes, maybe. Um, maybe, hopefully it, we can plop it in there. Dude, uh, I mean, it looks it looks not undissimilar to this stuff. But a lot you know, more browner. Uh, but it had, I mean, it literally had like fire marks around one of it. Like you could clearly see that it was burnt. From the inside out. Uh, so what we are looking to do, the reverse of show us your pipe is show us your bad pipe yeah. in this case. So. If you have, if you come across bad installations where the the pipe is brown, fragile, cracked, disjointed, sagging, sagging, which we did have a picture of that too. Yes, we did. Take a take a picture of it, send it to us. We will quickly respond back. We would love to, uh, you we'll, know, depending we'll on the install. We'll pay the shipping, of course, and we will handsomely reward you with stickers and swag and coffee mugs and espresso cups and uh, Stuff. pins and scarves. And I'm just looking around at, the, at all the, the center term garbage that we have in this room. Uh, you know, I'll be happy to send you a wonderful pack of fun stuff as a thank you. And, uh, you know, and, you know, and again, we'll pay for the freight to get the stuff back to or get the stuff to us. And in return, we will send you a pack uh, of swag. Uh, but let us see the pictures first, uh, and this time we're doing it the opposite, yeah, the opposite yeah. side of the coin. Send us your pipe. Send us your pipe. So, yeah, that's it. That's a small and short of it. We look forward to seeing what you guys come up with. We know that you uh, deal with this regularly. Uh, we talk with people Every day. I mean, who are, who are doing uh, boiler ripouts, who are replacing low efficiency with high efficiency, who are uh, visiting places that unfortunately have had a failure due to using the improper unlisted vent. And, uh, you know, they're putting in, of course, a listed system. So, yeah, we look forward to seeing what you guys come up with and happy to, to clothe you with center therm jackets and shirts and hats and everything. I mean, it's winter. I got nice new beanies. Ah, I have so, one of those at home. So, everybody, uh, show us. Your, your bad pipe. Your bad pipe. Welcome back to the Mechanical Room, and we welcome in our guest. With nine years under his belt as a plumber, 
Adam Gordon is the director of mechanical services for the Orea Group. Did I pronounce that right? No, it's Ore Orella. 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 Oh, so I was yes. going for the Spanish pronunciation. <laughs> not the uh, national uh, yeah, podcast. Not, not the phonetic pronunciation. Okay. The Orella. Um, the, oh, how do you pronounce it's that? Canada. Canada. In Canadian. The, the or it's Canada. like Canada. it's almost like umbrella. But the, Orella, yeah. The Umbrella Group here. No, the Umbrella yeah. Group, a full service general contracting company with a focus on building relationships. Adam brings a unique passion and enthusiasm to the trade, which is evident through his hard work and commitment, showing his genuine love for the industry through social media, particularly on Instagram, where you can follow him at, at Gordon Bot Plumbing. Adam, Adam has been instrumental in making lifelong connections he has built. He is continuously immersing himself in all things sales and marketing in the pursuit of creating a both a well-established personal and professional brand. And a couple of things that he left off of his bio, he hosts a podcast uh, ask him about and, and Instagram live regularly with our dear friend, Mr. Terrence Chan, who is gallivanting in the Far East right now. It is. And, uh, you know, he participated in the HPAC Modern Hydronics Summit in part of the Boiler Build. And if I do say so myself, he has one of the most badass logos slash stickers in he HPAC. Does, which I do not have, by the way. There's one in that catalog because it was on our oh, AHR thing. Oh, I'm stealing it today. All right, all right. I remember I snuck up. I snuck up at HR and stuck it on there. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast, Adam. Thank you for, for, uh, for joining us on the show here. Mike, say hello to our guest. Hello, Adam. How are you, sir? How's it going, Mike? So I'm doing well. Thank you very much for asking. I want to start off with not our podcast. Because it's about showing some love. Talk it. I, I want to hear about your podcast, which you know I at once joined. Uh, yeah. Tell us about it. We've both been on it. Uh, yes. What do you guys do? How is it different? What's this talking shit about? <laughs> tell us. Uh, to be honest, it, it started off with me starting to do lives with not only just Terrence, but with uh, PS Plumber. And it was literally just a live for us to just talk shit. Like just, just have a good time. People would join in. We start having conversations. And then Terrence is like, we should do this weekly. Like we should start doing this weekly and start having like stuff that we want to talk about in the industry that we, you know, are frustrated with or things that we want to change. And, and that's kind of rolled from there. Um, times have been busy. So we had it more scheduled for Thursdays, but now it's almost like whenever we get the chance to go on, we talk and, it, it gets some traction. It's pretty, it's pretty good. People like chiming in. So I'm not too, I, I'm, I'm fond of it. Yeah. Well, you guys do, you guys are both very engaging. So, I mean, it's on the strength of your both personalities plus industry knowledge, plus social media savvy, which I think sells that. And, uh, and Chris, uh, Mr. PS, the plumber himself, um, yeah. is, is, you know, right in there with that, that type of thing as well. He, uh, you know, would go live from his van with great frequency. I think I joined him live from an airport one time when he was just, you know, talking shit, you know, whatever, and, yeah. and just, you know, hanging out and, you know, and just talking to industry stuff and, and beyond. So, I mean, you guys do a, a great job with that and you've had a number of amazing guests on and including, Me? yeah, well, that too. I wasn't talking about us. I was, you know, you've, had, you've, had a, you've had an array of mediocre guests on and yeah. also some amazing folks as well. I think my favorite one was when Terrence was very snugly in the hotel room with the fellow from Taco, I want to say. Uh, um, no, that was... Um... That was uh, uh, Scott Semple from Navian. Yes. Okay. Right. Yes. They were. <laughs> that was hilarious to me, just because the settings very, very um, intimate. The, yes. the intimate impetus there. Yes. Um, <laughs> but again, it was very good, uh, and it always, it always is week in, week out. We of course try to try to tune in. Um, so you know, obviously, keep up the good work. You know, are you uh, are you doing it again this week? I'm not sure. I just talked to Terrence yesterday. I was like, I miss you. Come home from Japan. And he's like, he's like, I'm actually home now. And now he's flying to Calgary today because he's got Cyfex. So we're trying to get on soon. We see he he needed a he needed a break. He's yeah, been he, doing a lot of stuff. Modern Hydronics took a lot out of him. So yeah, talk about that a little bit. I mean, I, I, I we sponsored it. Central Therm did. Yeah. Uh, so we were also a part of the boiler build in addition to sort of being there at the ground level with with Terrence. Yeah. Um, give us your perspective. You know, you you were the, one of the influencers as part of the the advertised package. So yeah. just sort of take us through the process and your personal experience at the at the Modern Hydronics Summit and sort of around it. 
Well, it, it happened last year. Aaron Bond ran it and ran it in Bond the year before. He did something similar, and uh, and then HBAC I reached out to Terrence about doing it in BC, and, and he wanted to change it up to be more of an educational side of things. So there's time slots for people to come in and work on the board. There's a lot of people from suppliers, like people who work at the counter, that were able to get their hands on the products that they're selling, which is great for us because the number one complaint we have going to supplier is that these guys at the counter they know nothing about what we're buying and if we need some advice they're the guys we reach out to right so um for me too like i've been a service guy for the nine years that i've been in not installs all that much at all so for me i i was able to learn from colin sadler i was getting able to learn from mike flynn i was able to learn for george like some of these guys do some beautiful work and being able to learn this stuff from them is it it's uh, like priceless I, I I'm learning from these people from all over the world and understanding how they do things and how I can be better myself so that's what I really enjoyed about it I enjoyed that the community got together I enjoyed meeting the people and learning from them so so you just dropped what could only be described as like a a bomb squad all-star team of, of yeah. HVAC techs and no knowledge question. I mean we yeah. I, I am very close with Colin. He's one of my favorite, favorite people. Uh, you yeah. know, obviously Mike is a cut above. Uh, that whole list of, I mean, George, you know, all those guys. Uh, we always ask this uh, of techs in the field. You know, I mean, who, you, you know, those guys aside, because obviously, you know, they're there and, and they have influenced you in the recent history. Um, yeah. Over the course of your time on social media, as a technician, as an installer, as a service tech, um, who who else? Like, who are you looking to for inspiration? Who have you learned from that maybe you haven't come across at a trade show? Uh, I, I mean, I came across quite a few uh, at a trade show, but there's one person in particular in, on Instagram that really helped me in my path because I came from a marketing field. I worked for New Era before I got into plumbing, and when I had my daughter, uh, that's when I got into the trade, and that's when I wanted to kind of like – be able to support my family right so i hated plumbing when i first got into it but i was full of social media before and i got into uh got on instagram and i started following mechanical hub and eric was the first person i followed and i've been talking with eric on and off for nine years since i started as a first year apprentice and i was doing uh new construction rough and i hated it i was like i made the wrong choice and i finally got to meet eric this year at hr and we've been talking, we're friendly, but like I pulled him aside and I just had to uh, like explain to him that like he is a big reason why I'm so successful in this industry because he showed me the other aspects of plumbing, the service aspect and the hydronics aspect. And he really shaped where I was going to go in the industry. And that's why I have such a passion for Instagram, because if someone can influence me and find my passion for this trade, I want to do the same thing for these new apprentices that are out there. If someone can follow me and they see something that I do and they want to do what I do, I, I always reach out. I always help that's, people out. That's a pretty good, that's a pretty damn good story right there. I, I mean, yeah. it, it, we hear this time and time again. Um, I mean, obviously Eric is a behemoth in yes. terms of uh, technical knowledge and social media acumen. Uh, and he's obviously rolled that together into one of the most prominent, if not the most prominent account, certainly in North America, um, you know, with the, the tutorials and the, you know, the opinions and just the, and just the banter and the fun stuff too. I mean, he's really got the whole package there. Uh, but, but something that you hit on is something that I, we just hear time and time again from people like Sadler, from people like Flynn, from people like Ben Poole of HVAC Tactical, which is all about elevating the trades overall and doing professional work, making sure mm -hmm. everything obviously works correctly. But also, you know, I mean, it's there's pretty. I mean, you see something, some of those those gas lines being run by you know Mike Flynn, and it is an MC Escher painting, and he is doing this intentionally, to, and it looks amazing. And it's all about the craft. It's all about the professionalism, whatnot. Yeah. So I mean. You know, I think a lot of people share those sentiments with a lot of those names that we've been talking about already. Um, yeah. You are also part of the people, uh, part of the group now elevating that as well. So I, I have a question. Thanks. You mentioned international, the international reach. Yeah. Uh, it's something that I've started dabbling with is trying to get awareness of, you know, the trades and influencers and different products and brands outside of uh, North America, which of course we see day to day. Yeah. Do you follow anyone of real 
interest to you that is not in the United States? Kind of go a little international with the question. I know exactly. Where you're going. Bruno, Bruno, yeah, <laughs> Bruno, Bruno in Germany. I met him at HR um, uh, for the first time, and I'm going to be completely honest. I didn't even follow him. I didn't know who Bruno was. And then people were like, how do you know who, who Bruno is? And I like, we were talking, he's a really, really nice guy. And then I got offered to go to Ish with uh, Takeo this year. So I was in Germany and I got to meet up with him again there. And then I met a few other influencers from Germany as well. Uh, Bruno's the only one that kind of caters to almost a Canadian, like a, a English side of things. Like sure, his yeah. content is, is easier to understand. I follow a few other ones, but they speak mostly German. So I don't, it's, it's hard to comprehend, but Bruno is definitely one of them, man. Bruno is uh, Bruno's the man. Na Nample on Instagram. Yes, Nample. Yeah, Nample. We um, we yeah, had the pleasure of meeting him at the ISA show as well this year. Uh, yeah. Terrence and I were texting that whole time, and we just never crossed paths because I think we were there like two day, like a day later or something. And you know, yeah. so we just we never we were, we were never able to connect. But uh, we did run into Flynn and George. Uh, yeah. In the booth that was that. What was the name of the tool company that uh, was with? Rams. Yeah. 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 Um, and uh, that was that booth was right next to I want to say the Rems booth as well, right in the in close, the all close the tool, to it. All, all the tool guys were kind of close. They were in the same mammoth hall that uh, that they were in. Yeah, and I got to yeah, say, Rems, so was Rems, Rems, Rothenberger was right at the front when we first walked in, and then a few yeah, booths right. down there's Rems. They're they're like competitors. That's like Milwaukee. Yeah versus the wall over there in europe right yeah so so that's where they were they were all that's where we saw all those guys and actually Aoni was over there in the rems booth as well at that point as yeah. well uh, so was andy and george um, george was there flynn was there uh yes um, yeah, a bunch and, of guys. and our interaction with nample was uh amazing and you know so we, the thing that really surprised me about nample i mean obviously right he's one of the biggest in the world right yeah uh, we're central therm right compared to the numbers that he has i'm a nobody right yeah. i got you know close to a thousand followers he actually recognized us and knew us which is to me how can someone that has that reach still be so plugged in that that guy is amazed not only the quality of what he does not the reach that he has but he knew me and i'm a nobody compared to him yeah he, he we got an interesting story so he calls us soup brothers because we went out to a party with Taiko and we were with the owner of Taiko, Mr. White. And we were all staying there. We were with this one guy from Romania. He has a following on YouTube. I forget his name. He was uh, amazing, very, very smart. But we had a bunch of us outside and the owner, Mr. White was like, saw soup go by and he goes, ah, I wanna try some of that soup. And the guy came back and gave him the soup and I'm standing next to him and he drinks it out of a cup. And then he goes, do you wanna try some? And he passes it over to me I'm like, sure like it, the owner of Taco asked me to share some soup with him sure i will so i sipped the soup and i pass it on and we all shared soup together and we're all laughing because it was like it was like just after covid and everything <laughs> we're like we're all screwed but uh he uh it, it's a funny story so now we're forever soup brothers Bonded, like he uh, always is soup yeah. it's like passing the kiddish cup yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's just, it's amazing. It's a uh, well. It's funny those little moments that were that you know that you don't forget, and they too will of course remember as, as well. Um, yeah. I mean, it, it's a steel trap memory in Bruno's head over there as he recognized our logo. On my, uh, on my, I, I, I want to say I was wearing my like HVAC tactical like backpack with the yeah. patch on it, you know, and and he he knew us. Uh, obviously, our company is is somewhat german in respect uh, we have a headquarters yeah, the american side of things you know i, I was totally stunned that he reckon you know yeah. knew who we were so well we do a lot out here we, we do, do some Maybe it's, it's, the mechanical room. What do you think? to be honest it's it's nice for people to it, it's nice to feel that way though you know what i mean like um i i remember talking to a few people and they knew who i was and and it felt good so when i have people like messaging me i always try and get back to everyone especially sure. when they, you have people that have like you know 500 followers, the follower account doesn't matter. I'm only at 8,000. But like when I reach out to them and then they feel, it makes them feel good. You know what I mean? It's just like, you wanna help the industry. For yeah. sure, and again, that kind of harkens back to what we were talking about just a bit ago. I mean, like your earnest desire to connect and help and whatnot is the kind of thing that somebody it will not forget. The way Eric Owney is to you, you yeah. are to that person. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. And I'll never forget that. Right. Like, like I, I, you can't do something for the rest of your life if you don't have a passion for it. Like, I don't want to go to work miserable every day. I want to go to work happy. So if I can enjoy what I'm doing, find a passion for what I'm doing and then help other people have that passion, then it's, it's good That's for me. It's about. For sure. Yeah. 
Okay, so you alluded to going to work, right? Give yep. us a little bit of day to day for you here. You're obviously, you're in the office today. You're not covered in grease or you know. <laughs> what? I'm, 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 I'm a little dirty. Do a lot of installs, or are you on the um, office side of things? So I'm more office side of things now. Um, so my my background, I was I did it. I jumped a few companies when I was a first and second year, and then I was with Black and Mac for about four or five years. Black and McDonald's is quite a large company. Uh, they do a lot of hydronic service in old schools and uh, pretty big corporate buildings, and there's a union company. And then three years ago, I had the opportunity to create uh, a really good plumbing. We're a general contractor, but they didn't have a plumbing division. So I got into this, but I was going from a commercial world to doing residential service. Now, three years in, I'm more of a commercial service company and getting into installs. So I got uh, a boiler rip out coming in, uh, within the next few weeks, I got a mechanical room coming in and I'm just slowly getting into that commercial world that I'm comfortable in. So for me, a day to day is really organizing. I have six guys. I organize them, get them out there. But there's some stuff that they're not capable of doing. So I go and do it. Backflow testing. Uh, today, I did a leak investigation because we're booking four weeks out and I don't want clients to wait. So now I'm on the tools a little bit more. But now we're looking at hiring some more. So and then I like doing um, like social media is a thing too and then i was i was talking to matt about uh emco they want me to do their feature wall so i'm yeah. going to be doing their feature wall so it's going to be i'm pretty excited about that not many people know about that yet so sure, sure. i'm going to be building it's the biggest emco in all of the country and we're going to do a massive hydronics feature Which wall and, is that in? Uh, emco toronto Toronto. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we were talking about this, and uh, you know, obviously, we're happy to provide you with uh, you know, the vent to make it to make it work. And there was there's a chance that I'll I'll come up and uh, take some yeah. photos with you, and yeah. uh, you know, just sort of make it a big thing because it is kind of nice. Um, I mean, we love that stuff. We we are obviously safety focused and yeah. uh, showcasing how how proper installation and whatnot is sort of fundamental to yeah. to learning a, a new product for some people and whatnot. So, you know, absolutely, whatever support you need from us, you got it. He wants some of those Marisano tomatoes. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're well, I, I think those tomatoes are federally legal in his country, so. Uh... Yeah. You can get those at every corner. <laughs> but not from Italy. They're Marisano. It's not... it's no, no, they're Marisano for, they're from, from BC, though. They're from BC. <laughs> yes. BC tomatoes, very, very yeah. well-known, well-known. They're very well though bc tomatoes yeah something about the climate with those tomatoes yeah. i am willing to spend the premium for arizona tomatoes now right. bc has great tomatoes we have great peaches our peaches okay. in ontario those are no yeah. kidding yeah no i love peaches i don't know if you've seen some of my videos i do i do a peach video every year sure. i'd be okay. like eating peaches and peaches come all down my face Cronin, it's the juiciest Cronin, uh canada peaches yeah yeah grimsby um uh, Grimsey is known for their peaches, and they have like a peach festival every year, and they're amazing. They're so good. Try them next time I'm there. Yep. So you yep. born and bred Ontario? Uh, yes, uh, born in Brampton, uh, raised in Niagara Falls. Uh, my mother's from Belfast. My dad's from Glasgow, so we have a wow. British background. But I was the first born here in Canada. Yeah. Well, no doubt. Very right. excellent. Very have nice. you been to Belfast? Yes, I went in December for the first time uh, for my mother's 60th. We surprised her, me and my, my siblings. We went out there. We went for three days. I drank a lot of beer in three days. <laughs> That's, uh, I, I feel, you know, a lot of people go to Ireland, but they yeah. do not go to Northern Ireland. And uh, I Belfast was one of the most amazing parts of, of a trip that I took to Ireland. Yeah. Um, some really unforgettable stuff. I've um, never been. I got to go. It's yeah. on the bucket list. It is. It is really, truly, truly an amazing spot. I mean, you know, uh, I'm assuming you've been to, uh, you know, like the the Giants Causeway and all that stuff as well. Yeah. Like, you know, City um, Hall is beautiful. City Hall itself is beautiful. Like yeah. downtown Belfast is beautiful, and there's a, a lot of places there. And the uh, Belfast Giants. I haven't seen a Belfast Giants hockey game yet, though. But they're. I want to go see it. I mean, it's a Canadian thing, but. <laughs> well, I know you're a big Leafs fan. Yes. So was that that was opening night you were at the other night? Yeah. Yeah, I've actually never been to opening night, um, and we got opening night see, uh, tickets, uh, but the seats never fill, so we had tickets at the very top, and then within five minutes, I was sitting six rows up behind the net. Wow. It looked like yeah. a good time. Um, oh, it was great. Games are always fun. It doesn't matter who's playing. I mean, if you follow your team, you go. It's even better, but just in general, hockey games are so much fun. Obviously very exciting. I mean, yeah, fast yeah. pace. Fast yeah. pace, uh, energetic. I'm a big football fan too. I actually, um, I started the biggest Baltimore Ravens fan club in Canada. 
Yeah, I pass it on to another guy that's there because I'm too busy. But yeah, it's uh, the Northern Flock. So I usually flew to Baltimore every year and watch the Ravens play. So I, I love football. So how did, football how did the Ravens, how, like, what's the genesis of the Ravens fandom? So um, I play defense because I play football most of my, my life. Uh, I played defense. They had a dominant defense and they became a team the same year the Toronto Raptors became a team. So 95. And I didn't want to be a Bills fan because I'm a Leafs fan. And, I, and if I'm a Leafs and a Bills fan, I don't want double heartbreak because they're both not very good. <laughs> so. Yeah, but you still have it with the Ravens, though. Did you still? Well, the, the Ravens hey. have been successful in our lifetime. Yeah, they have. Two Super Bowls. Two Super Bowls. True. Yeah, yeah, the Bills, they're like the Vikings, still trying. Yeah. Yes. So my dad's from Buffalo and my dad actually lived in Niagara uh, for a little while as well. So, nice. you know, I have some Canadian bona fides myself, uh, but he's a big Bills uh, fan. He was on the U.S. side of Niagara. Though. No, he lived in Canada. He lived in Canada? He no, in Canada. I know it was Niagara Falls. I didn't yeah. know it was on well, the Well, he was side. born in, in Buffalo, but he lived oh, in Niagara on the Canadian okay. side for two years, whatever. He always tells stories about driving cars on the ice and psychotic <laughs> stuff like that. We used to actually grocery shop in Buffalo as kids. Like oh, my really? mom would go over and do grocery shopping in the States because we're so close. I live 20 minutes from Buffalo, so I can drive over the, the border anytime I want. Go do a Target trip. Sure. <laughs> yeah. I was always fascinated to me. I, I forget. I couldn't remember what it was, but it was people, uh, you know, when I, I was always fascinated by the customs stuff that would go on and yeah. people would leave shoes like in the parking lot and wear the new shoes back home. Um, it was very, it was very strange. So nothing to declare, you know, that's yeah. it. That's yeah. Yeah. It's it's crazy, but it's uh, I go over and and do um, do shopping from here to uh, from here and there. But I want to go find True Works. I I hate that I can't get True Work pants in Canada. It drives me nuts. But I can't find them anywhere. I got to order them and get a PO box in the states or something. We we should brand them, and uh, that could be a new part of our yeah. uh, wardrobe. Yes, let's do it. <laughs> so when's the next tattoo appointment? Um, I talked to him today. Probably in the next two weeks. That's I got it. I gotta finish finish up my neck. I this one I just colored that in. I gotta color this in, and then I gotta color in the middle. So hopefully done before AHR. Is that uh does that holistically complete your uh your your you know naked skin? Or no. you, got, you got more <laughs> spots around? I mean, careful, you're, careful. You're, you're, you you're a headline. <laughs> like I have some tattoos. And yes. I have a lot more that you cannot see. Uh, it yeah. looks like I have less because I don't have any on this arm. But uh, yeah. you know, I got I got quite a, quite a few. Uh, how much real estate you have remaining, and do you intend to cover it all? Uh, um, I hate getting tattooed, dude. I hate it, but I love I like love the artwork. So I have plans for quite a bit. My entire back is empty. I want to get that done for my shoulders, the behind my butt cheeks. Um, I'll tell you this right uh, now: the butt cheeks are not pleasant. I heard. I heard. They are not pleasant. I have my butt tattooed, and it is not pleasant. You know, Dude. I appreciate. Uh, I, I want to hear more about the plans because I'm, I'm yeah. curious about them. But I do appreciate your honesty. There yeah. is a definitely a group of folks out in this world who are like, I love getting tattooed. Tattoos feel so good. It's so good people. to get them. I love when I'm in that chair and you're getting a needle. I love. I fall asleep and it's just so great. You, you I'm sound so, like I'm Colbert so, doing I'm so, an imitation so of somebody tough. else right now. Yeah, yeah, I do. It's kind of like Trump. Colbert doing Trump. Right? Yes. He's like, I'm so tough. I love getting tattoos. It's so good. Those people are so full of shit. It's ridiculous. Yes. Every tattoo is is a varying degree of pain. I wish I could get my arms done again. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? I like. I wish I could, because everywhere else sucks now. Like, yeah. I, I think back, I'm like, man, I wish I could just do like here. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? Again, my neck was spicy, but the, my neck was the first time I ever used numbing cream. So okay. uh, the numbing cream worked for about thirty minutes. Yeah, and then it's and then it's gone. Can you but, not really um, it starts or no? uh you're i mean you you're covered no. in, in a stencil you're you yeah. know you're the guy's working you so not really no yeah you're basically screwed and you don't want him to try and put a stencil on halfway done no, you know what yeah. i mean like like you just it's go time that's it so, so what, what's i'm your 10 out of 10 pain area see that's hard because i have my the back of my head was kind of tough but it was like the back of the neck hurt more uh but the one i remember more than anything is my foot I, top, like top yeah. of the foot yeah, yeah. Like, i don't know if i'll ever get my other foot done it's <laughs> it's not fun it's not fun so, at all uh for me i have a giant piece of color right here and it was <laughs> excruciating from start to finish it was five hours of basically nine or ten out of ten pain um yeah. we need to get uh we we need to have no i'm not getting no no, no i was I, you've, I've, tried, I've tried for years with you we need to get terrence in the chair 
Oh yeah, we do. I've been telling him he's got to so get Gordon Bot logo. Nice, where that might be doable. Oh, there is. Oh, I know where you're going with this. Yeah, so, so uh, you know, can, can we have we hinted at this or no? Uh, I do believe. Um, I well, mean, has he qualified? As of right this second, yes, he has. Okay. What? What are we talking about? So. Uh, welcome to Miami. Bienvenidos a Miami. So, what? you know, we, we are, the, you the know. front man has been combing through the submissions and he has a handful or more of, uh, names that he has turned in. That's it. And some of those names, uh, give me like one or two, no more than that. Well, since, since, one. We're, since we're talking about Terrence, well, you know, we want the podcast twins or the soup, soup brothers or whatever the hell it was. We're bringing you, you guys are coming down. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Awesome. Some of you and Terrence yeah, are in. Some really nice, uh, some nice posts. The oh, that's so, yeah. oh that's, that's so amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. I'm so excited. That's going to be yeah, so fun. Like, what are we doing there? Which ties to tattoos. So, yes. um, I'm sure you've seen there, you know, uh, famously there's some, obviously there's a lot of heavily inked humans in this, in this industry. Um, yes. l- last time around we got temporary tattoos and yeah. we were slapping them I'm, on I'm people. Score. I'm good with that. Not. I can do one of those again. <laughs> and and uh, you know, this, this time around is bigger. It's better. It's, you know, more, more, permanent. more, more ridiculous and yes, more permanent. And we are bringing an actual tattoo artist with us. So we are, we are going to, I mean, there's only so much time. And you yeah. know, obviously tattoos take a little bit of time, so we're gonna set up like a little bit of a calendly type of you know uh, appointment, like an and appointment calendar. I'm, I'm having it's actually my guy. I'm bringing yeah. down um, from uh, from upstate New York down to to Miami, and yes. we'll have some plumbing flash ready and all this sort of stuff, and we'll be a, fr- a first sign up. Everybody goes second because I'm going first, and yeah. then uh, and then after that we will you know it's first come first serve basically. Uh, but since you're the first person uh, that we've officially qualified, I think we could get you in the number list. two. <laughs> yes, yeah. I need now, to get tattooed. Two. Yeah, yeah, you be you're number two, and then uh, yeah. we'll have like basic little art, you know, that's ready to roll, so the guys oh, can kind of in and out kind of thing. Yeah, awesome. And, and that's actually, sweet. You're, you're, you're a tattoo expert, you know, or, or experience that is. So, like, if you have ideas for types of flesh, obviously we're gonna have some like wrenches and all the kind of like yeah. the, the standard stuff. We'll we'll ha- we'll have him prepared with like a bunch of stencils already done, so we can like bang it out in like 15, 20 minutes. Um, I was always I always thought about getting uh, me personally because I was like, do I get something ta- like plumbing related when I finally get my red seal? And I was like, it'd be cool to get 1.414 on me, which is a calculation to calculate 45 degree angles on an offset. <laughs> that's a great idea yeah, that's yeah. So be, ideas, we'll take them and have them ready to go for anybody i mean and that's them. just one that's just numbers essentially right, right. so quick. Quick and easy. yeah that's pretty small. cool i like that and only a plumber would really understand that you know what i mean right. like someone would be like why do you have 1.414 on you it's like you won't understand <laughs> you keep right, fantastic. Well, we'll, we will put you on the list and welcome to yeah. miami man i mean oh. so so with, with that with that in mind I mean, so, you know, now, now we know each other for a little bit, um, but yeah. we didn't really two years ago. Yeah. Um, did, did you see any of what was going on last time around and what are your impressions or hopes for, for what's to come? I, I did. I'm going to be honest. I didn't really see much of what was going on before. I've heard lots of stories about it and I heard it was really cool. And I, I love your marketing for it. Like the, with the the squid games and like it looks really really fun so i'm excited to see what what's in store like i explain what 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 exactly goes on now we're getting tattooed so i'm excited That's but what else that we're doing yeah. so i mean the we have we can't really spill too much of the beans but we have some whole amazing stuff planned already okay. and we have- i guess in in kind of the big picture when we did it the first time we were going for like you know how do we visually make it stunning audio the sound how do we make it stunning? How do we gamify it, as we call it? And it was one of those fluke things where, you know, the squid game was raging and it's like, man, that well, was, you watched it on a plane or something I, like, I, like that. I binged you know? it uh, coming yeah. back from Greece. It's uh, everybody was talking about it in Greece. Matthew and I chatted about it. I'm like, I'm just going to download them all. My iPad, the entire flight. The person yeah. sitting next to me was a little old Greek lady <laughs> watching, watching me with, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> but I did the whole thing on the flight back. And I, I came back and I'm like, Matthew, the, you know, Matthew's like, we're not doing it unless it's gamified and it's a competition. That's yeah. my, that's my, we got to meet that minimum threshold. And it's yeah. like, can we pull something like this off where it's like a, an elimination competition? And so that's how it came to be. So it, it had to be, you know, like, you know, uh, current, it had to be exciting. It had to be visual. The place we did it was visual. 
And now it's like, well, how do we take it to the next level? Right. So, so we've got a bunch of interesting stuff so, stored, funny and dramatic. Oh my and, God. Some things are going to be just amazing. Um, we yeah. have, uh, uh, do you, you must be familiar with Roger Wakefield. Yeah. yeah. So we have a really fun role for Roger and he's, he's really all about it. He's actually our, he November, knows, he he's, knows he's uh, our November guest. And I think we're going to announce what he's doing on the next podcast. But nice. Nice to say, uh, we need to survey a hundred plumbers a few times, and yeah. uh, you know the top answers will be on the board, and um, that's where I'll I'll leave it at. Um, okay, perfect. Uh, so. You can come kind of make the connections there. <laughs> yeah, uh, but it you know just like all the games that we did or all the games in the program, it's like an elimination thing or a better qualification for the next round. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and of course that's the sweet. And of course, the big thing is we uh, we one we got the same hotel because everybody loved it. Yeah, um, it and we also got the same 3D immersive venue for the main event, which uh, you know basically it's just a series of projections on a all white dome. And yeah. then I, I work with the video company, produce my own content, and also work with them to have immersive situation, right? So it, yeah. it's going to be wild. I mean, the visuals are crazy. Um, you might want to take some tomatoes before you get down there. And I'll really <laughs> <enhance that. laughs> and, I uh, snuck a few. I snuck a few tomatoes on my Germany flight, so I'm pretty good at that. Tomatoes. Yeah, they're really good, really good, especially when you eat them. <laughs> oh, yeah. they, 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 when when you eat those tomatoes, they get processed by the liver. It's a whole different story. It's um, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> So we have, we shouldn't have talked about tomatoes um, before we started. I don't know how we got yeah. to that. Well, you know, yeah. it's just how it is. It's the mechanical, yeah. right? No, no, yeah. required, right? Uh, so, so awesome. we have so many, we have more ideas than we'll ever be able to pull off. Yeah. Yes. Um, and we are just now in the qualification phase, let's say. So you're really the first person to be announced and officially invited. Uh, so I feel we blessed. Have, this is um, awesome. A number, I mean, I, and, and I will say your countrymen will be very well represented. Yeah, Canada, we always talk about the level of uh, expertise and quality coming out of Canada. And, you know, in yeah. this qualification process, it's like, oh, my God, you know, Canada is like killing it you know, when it comes to content and uh professional, you know, professional installations. installations and quality we're trying we're trying it's it's frustrating we we do talk uh, social media wise we do talk that our our uh, population is much lower than some of the states right like california has the same population as all of canada so like right. to get those get those followers in canada it's really difficult it's it's really you hard you guys are 10 percent of the the u.s population in essence the size, you're a little bigger than the size of california uh, yeah no we were actually talking. We were actually talking. We were kind of spinning something because someone brought up how the boiler build would be so fantastic for something at AHR. They're like, it would be great if AHR did something like that. And then we brought, I brought up, um, imagine we did a Canadian board and a US board, not a competitive, but like just compare the differences between, you know, how the done. stuff that they do in, in the US compared to the stuff that we do in Canada. It, it'll go competitive because it always does. Oh, <laughs> yeah. but, but like, it would be really cool. That'd be a really cool thing for HR. So you never know. And that might be yeah, something that comes up. With that concept, just because we know we, so we have a, we, you know, obviously from a corporate perspective, we have a budget that we have to work within, which, which then defines how many hotel rooms and how many participants, et cetera, et cetera. So we've, we've kicked around the idea of like, you know, half and half us versus canada i mean yeah. we even, so i'm yeah, i know you know that we are uh you know part of a, a larger global corporation there yep. was even a time in which uh we were d possibly involving some of our sister companies and also it's an olympic year so we were thinking about doing like team usa team canada team great britain team netherlands team so we might get there in future iterations of this yeah. uh, it didn't work out this time around for various reasons we were just focusing on like you know central north america. north america here but i mean we love that idea and also the best part of it all is Yes, it's competitive, but everybody is so friendly. It's all yeah. it's, it's it's friendly competition. It's not uh, bloodthirsty. It's not uh, you know nasty at all. Everybody is helping each other out and having a good yeah. time. And really, that's the the main focus the, of it the, all. The interesting thing was when we did it the first time last year. Uh, George from Jersey, he's like, you know, I never thought I'd make it to like the finals. I came, you know, I figured I'd you know I. Uh, take it as it went but then when i was in the quarterfinals he's like i didn't want to lose man i was i was all in i was gonna go for it like, so is oh, this we're barred at that i'm 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 in 
So, so is the, this a physical uh, thing? Is this a physical and mental thing? Like, do I need to be in running sheets and shorts or what? Oh, yeah, it's casual uh, casual uh, wear. I mean, beach okay. wear too. That's part of yeah, the, perfect. the other announcements. Yeah, so we, we're, we're toying with a lot of ideas. Um, yeah. I mean, we, we also don't want it to, you know, it's certainly we, we work in some sort of some flex time because we want people to enjoy the pool and hang out mm -hmm. and whatnot. And certainly come dinner time and slash open bar time, it's, you know, a lot more of a networking and fun situation. But we yeah. have, uh, I mean, we want it to be both sort of hands on and also mental. And I mean, we, there's really, you know, nothing is like short of one or two ideas. Um, we only have the list of things that maybe we can do this, maybe, you know, so we're, we're yeah. still in that, in that beginning process. What do you think? What, what would you really enjoy? I mean, obviously boiler build has already kind of been done, but what, what, uh, give it some thought. You didn't even have to answer now, Yeah. No. but no, I'd be curious that... to get your input. Yeah, no, for sure. I'm always thinking education. So anything that's like really learning about your product and, and understanding your product and and um, just digging deep into that. Uh, but I'd have to give it some thought and see what see what we can come up with. We did a, we did a Kahoot last time. We did. Maybe yeah. we could do it a little bit more technical. We did it a little bit more fun and open last time. Maybe Kahoots a little are fun. More technical. Yeah, those are fun. Yeah, Kahoots are fun, yeah. especially yeah, if you pick your own name. The Wakefield thing a bit. A bit. A bit. Um, um, yeah. One is, without giving too much away, uh, I can see, I can see a different, I don't want to give too much away, but I can see <laughs> a way to separate the two. So we are, yeah, we're, Michael and I are going down to, uh, the site in early December yes. to look into a few different things, which does include, uh, mass gatherings on the beach. Can we, yeah. can we give alcohol to people on the beach? You know, like that sort of thing. What permits yeah. do we need or for this or that? Yeah, well, well, not alcoholic beverages. Yeah, well, not alcoholic beverages. There's no rules around that. I mean, obviously. So, yeah. so you. You know, if you want a, a juicy juice, you're you're welcome to it. Uh, Adam. A juice box. Um, yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm so, in the juice box. Or like, <laughs> I, people want like a, you know, like whiskey on the beach, of course, or uh, actually, it's you know, margarita, daiquiri type of thing. Um, That's the vibe there. Yes. I think indeed. I think I've gained a I think I've gained a, a reputation for drinking a little bit uh, in the last year from all the trade shows and stuff I went to. I always having a beer in my hand. I'm like, oh god. I definitely put some comments on a chat when you. I, I want to say you were live at the Hofbrau. Yeah. Oh God. Right. That was after ish because I was in Munich. Okay. But that was yeah. uh. I mean, how, how was your time in Munich after ish? And uh, you tell him what I'm talking about here. If you have a memory uh, of it, which probably is a bit, a bit foggy. I remember some so, of that. So it, it was good. So we did uh, Hofburn House for St. Patrick's Day. So that's my big holiday. I I thoroughly enjoy it. And Mike Miller from Taco, he he could put them back too. So we really together. It was we were taking. Uh, we were writing down how many that we were drinking in the whole table. And I remember uh, I remember singing the national anthem in Germany. <laughs> oh, Canada. In Germany. Oh, yeah, and drinking beer and our whole table saying, oh, Canada, because our whole table is Canadian. Right. So, yeah, no, it was uh, it was it was fun. I had a few pops. We drank a few. <laughs> so Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. We we we, we debated Munich. We ended yeah. up going the other direction and we went to Berlin after Frankfurt. Um, yeah, which is you know I mean it was my personal choice because I had yeah. I had been, I had been to Munich before, um, yeah. so I wanted to go to a place that I've never been to. Um, yeah. So we went to Berlin and did a similar situation uh, with large beers and whatnot. As I well. had a small one. You, you did. Yeah, to be honest, man, I never I never thought of Germany as a place that I'd want to travel to until I went with for that. And now it's like something somewhere I'd go back. I love the culture there. It's amazing. I love the beer and the food and everything in Germany was amazing. So I'd love to go back again one day and, and see it again. Yeah, so. I mean, Germany is, I don't think people understand how how vast Germany really is. It is a, it is a pretty big country. country as far in terms of European countries. Yeah. And, uh, you know, in Munich, that's Bavaria. It's a very different situation than Dusseldorf, which is a lot more like a, you know, like a New York City or a Toronto type of place, which yeah. is very, very different than Berlin, which is a very happening international cosmopolitan city, more like a Amsterdam or, oh, okay. you know, um, what's the other, or like uh, a, almost like a New York City. Yeah, I mean, it, it, the, the skyscrapers, the buildings, yeah, yeah. The, the buzz yeah. on the street, very much like a U.S., a large U.S. city. Yes, I yeah. um, and I mean, and. Well, I've been very lucky. We're a German company. I've been through through Germany, and it's very you know all, there's lots of amazing stuff going on throughout. It's very you know it's a nice, very clean country. Yeah. I mean the, the the quality of the roads. I mean, I, I, were you able to were you ever on the autobahn while you were over there going like 160 no. miles an hour or whatever? 
No, we went on that train though. We went on the train that goes the bullet train that went really fast. We went took the bullet train from Frankfurt to Munich. So it was it was fun. I, it was cloudy though. Let's I, let's just be. I, it was it was ten days of cloudiness. <laughs> that's just, well, that's the I, time. I, I mean, spring, April showers or whatever, right? I mean, it wasn't like the dead of summer. Um, no. It was springtime. So. Yeah, well, we had. No, cloudy. I meant I meant, sure I meant cloudy in my head. Oh, oh well, yes, yes, that too. Um, <laughs> I mean, you could be cloudy. It, so. Yeah, it, it, it was beautiful. It was just like it was just a lot. Like we did a lot of castle tours, a lot of walking, and a lot of drinking. It was like nonstop drinks in our hands. So it was like one of those things you really enjoyed. You want to take it in, but it's like maybe I should have drank a little less. <laughs> like. So you go back yeah, again, so you remember. Yeah. So, and yes. then the second time, and when you go back, of course, you don't need to do the touristy stuff anymore. You can just yeah. go and enjoy the taverns and the beer gardens and whatnot, which is, yeah. I mean, iconic. It's, that's part of part of German culture. culture. So, I mean, doing that means like you're, you're, you know, do as the locals do, do as the Romans do, right? So we, uh, we actually, we actually were at a restaurant. We were dead tired. It was the second day of ish. We did twenty thousand steps that day. Our feet were tired. I was like, I need to go back to the hotel. But behind us was the Strong Beer Festival. And I thought he was saying something in German and I didn't know he meant strong beer. So I was like, yeah, let's go for a drink. We ended up having like four strong beers, like the big ones. And it's like 9% alcohol. And it was like just another night that was just, we were dancing on tables. Everybody was dressed up in their like stuff. I was like, well, the culture is crazy. Everybody's so friendly. I just, I loved it. It was so fun. Yeah, it's so. fantastic. I mean, Ish was a one of a once in a lifetime experience that hopefully I can, will, you know, we'll do uh, it. We'll it was do my it first again, time and it was, you know? it was amazing. Just the sheer yeah. scope, size, vastness, uh, you know, so many companies that we don't see in North America too, which was good yeah. to see, you know, all those companies. Yeah. So, well, obviously we'll see you in Florida, but uh, will we also see you in Chicago at AHR perhaps? Yes, you will. Yes, you will. I'm going to be in Chicago. I've already got everything booked for Chicago. I'm actually doing AHR. I'm going to be there early and then I'm flying on the Wednesday from Chicago right to Indianapolis for wet. For the wet show. Yeah, so I didn't do wet last year. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, a, that's two yeah. two weeks of, of intense travel yeah. right there. I was talking to George yesterday, and, and he was like, yeah, we, we, we get, get a bus from Chicago to Indianapolis. I was like, oh, what's down there? Oh, the wet show is immediately following, and then Miami's uh, two weeks after that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, of course, in March, there's all that other stuff, including uh, MCE, which I'm fortunate enough to be going to Italy for the uh, the flip flop show. You know, one on, one on even years or whatever. It's uh, it's ISH or yeah. on, on odd years. It's ISH on even years. It's MCE. It goes back between Frankfurt and and Milan. Yeah. Um, so. If you can I heard take, that. take you there, I'll see you over there, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, we have, so what we have is I have, uh, I, George was bringing up the the limo. He's looking at a limo to take us to oh, Indianapolis. Exactly. So we're getting like, like 30 of us on a, on a bus from AHR right to there. I don't know. It'll be crazy. But I strongly so you suggest have... getting one that has a bathroom on it. <laughs> yes, I think this one does. Um, so we have, um, we have AHR and then right to wet. And then February now is going to be you guys. And then March, I have CMPX because it's our big Canadian show here in Toronto. Yeah, we, so, we'll be there as well. We'll I, there. I personally will not be there, but Central Therm has a nice booth, so we will we'll be represented there, of course. I will be at the CMPX show. Awesome. Yeah, that's great. I, I will go out. That'll be a great time. I know Taco is doing a party there as well. They do quite a bit of stuff there, and there's a few other people there. Bell and Gossett. And I, I really enjoy CMPX. That's it's a really yeah, fun show for sure. for our city. So, yeah, I I'm a I'm a big fan of Toronto. So, yeah. um, I mean, Toronto is a wonderful place and CMPX is always, it's, you know, just, it's the, it's the right, to me, it's the right size. A yeah. AHR is, is overwhelming. ISH was like, I don't know, my head uh, was exploding. Uh, uh, <laughs> you know. uh, AHR compared to ish is nothing. Ish yeah. Is, oh yeah. It's just. Un unfathomable. I mean, it makes, how big it, it is. AHR makes it look like a coffee, a coffee cart, it whereas like where Ish is like a uh, yeah, like the the headquarters of Starbucks, you know, something like we, that. It's we uh, we decided. I've always done CMPX. And then I went to HR uh, last year and I was like, man, this is so big. I can't believe it, this and that. And then I found out I was going to Ish and they're like, you, you think HR was big? Wait till you go to Ish. And yeah. Ish was like, I felt almost uncomfortable uh, because I felt like I didn't know much because the, the technology in Germany and in Europe, like is just so much more advanced than we have. So you're like, what are you doing? Like, how is this heck possible? Like, this yeah, is and, 
I mean, I found ISH to be even more international than AHR, which has a, a flavor of international, uh, you know, exhibitors. However, you walk around ISH, and it's like, where are you from? You guys are from your Turkish manufacturers. You're, yeah. you're, from, you know, you're from where? You're from, you know, all every like every nation. You know, like pro the spectrum of, of nations represented is is va much vaster at a, at ISH. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Sure. I always picked up li like little knickknacks uh, from my desk, like this I got from sure. HR. Yeah, it's cool little things. Like, sure. and I, I saw like half these companies, half these companies, I I don't know who they were, but it's nice to know them now, right? Social media pre presence is a big thing too for a lot of these companies. Like, you guys are explosive on social media for venting and everything. You guys do a really good job at it. So, like, you get your name out there that way because people don't look at magazines anymore, man. People scroll yeah. their phones. So yeah. brand awareness has completely changed the game and being able to get out there social media wise, it really, it really helps quite a bit. So it is the, the way of the future. You know, you, we look at trends and, you know, marketing spend and marketing spend has been pretty flat for our industry. Yeah. But when you look at where it's spent, it's hockey stick effect around social media. Yeah. So now hopefully we're not giving away too much to our competition, but, uh, well, you, you do have to have a creative genius at the helm. Uh, that, well, thank you so, very much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, you and and full credit to to you, know, understanding and recognizing and being certainly a part of it as well. Very often, you know, typically, arguably, we're both the face of. of yeah, it, but you're you're I mean? you're the one that makes it happen. Oh, you know, the, the, I could not do. I couldn't hold a candle to what you do. With, what, with it's, the it's the tomatoes. It's the tomatoes. It's the tomatoes. <laughs> yeah, I got to change up the marizano to something else. I think. Yeah. Just come on over. It's so <laughs> funny. <laughs> All right, so uh, we always ask a question at the very end. We yes, got to wind yes. out. We've taken up a lot of your time, so uh, we go through okay. this rapid fire of boom, boom, boom. We go on all kinds of tangents. Okay. What do you listen to when you got your earbuds in when you're listening to music? Favorite band, yeah. favorite song, favorite genre, that type of thing. Man, man, I, it, that's such a hard question for me. God, because it oh, really is it. You know, from here to here, that's good too. Okay, I listen. To, I listen to a little hardcore music. I grew up in the hardcore music scene, but I will listen to country as well. It's really in how I'm feeling. Yeah, okay. but I like if I'm if I'm like want to get shit done or go to the gym or like really go at it, I'm listening to hardcore like Hate Breed, like yeah. And so, then I'm, I I have email too, like Boys Night Out. Like, oh yeah, I've seen some videos of you like drunk with your boys doing some weepy emo singing late night for sure, for sure. <laughs> at my buddy's at my buddy's wedding, yeah. We yeah, were all yeah. grew up in the music scene, man. I'm actually going. I got backstage passes for Boys Like Girls, Four Years Strong next Tuesday, so I'm gonna be going to that show. So yeah, fantastic. Nice. fantastic. All right, what's your, what's your favorite movie? Uh, that's another tough one, man. <laughs> for uh, Four Brothers. Four brothers, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, I like that one. Only because I saw it yesterday on Netflix. <laughs> I can't think of anything else. <laughs> that is what is known as recency bias. Yes, yes that's it. It's how my how my brain works. No, yeah, you know what? Good. You know what? Braveheart. That's my favorite movie. Uh, Braveheart. Uh, that's so a, that's back a to, to the Scottish heritage there. Yeah. Classic, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. That's actually something another idea that we've been toying with. I'm not sure if it's Scottish or Irish, but we we might do um like a ten foot caber toss. On the, oh. uh, on the on the on the was one of our ideas. Because uh, I think that as long as you don't invite H Fact Strong, as long no, as H Fact Strong, he he'll destroy all of us. I mean, unofficially, officially, unofficially, officially, he's definitely definitely coming. Yeah, well, <laughs> so, the um, front yeah. man was the banana. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> yeah. I don't see that banana post where he was wearing the kilt and the banana dropped out. Oh my yeah, God. Yeah, that was so a good post. Is, uh, that was really good. With the banana. Ben, sure. ben yeah. is um. He, you know, it's funny. We, we, we just and just close it out with this type of uh, positive affirmation again. He is right shoulder to shoulder with Flynn and Ownie and yourself and Terrence with the professionalism and the, uh, you know, the tutelage. And I mean, I, I come from radio background, right? Like, like you coming from New Era, whatever. I have no HVAC real experience except for at Central Therm, and I rely on people like Ben to explain to me what just what the hell is going on with a furnace or what's going on with an air conditioner repair or, or whatever and i mean he is 
he's one of my favorite people uh, in this industry yeah. for sure. Class, class. He's a, he's he's great. I I get along with him really well with the Scottish background as well. We we connect on that uh, on that side as well, family side. But like I met him at AHR uh, again, one of the first times we're hanging out at the airport, and I just I click with him. He's a really nice guy, and he he cares about the industry, and that's all that matters. He does. So that's great. That's a great a great note to conclude on, Adam. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us here. Uh, we will see you in Chicago, if not earlier. Congrats! The first that. announcement from the front. That's awesome. Man. Um, Thank you very much. That's um, amazing. Get your whole back tattooed so you can show it off on the beach, please. And, yes. Uh, uh, you know, get your speedo ready. So awesome. That's it. Speedo don't, camera don't, on, on South Beach. <laughs> don't test me. Don't test me. I will bring a speedo. Listen, a lot of folks like us out there who are not who are ready to don't you not you know can't threaten us with a good time. That's, yes. Uh, no. Not at all. <laughs> all right, man. Thanks so much. All right. Talk to you nice chatting with you, man. Be good. Welcome back, ladies and gents. Uh, that was uh, quite an interview uh, with Adam. Uh, I always love uh, watching the uh, the talking shit uh, between him and uh, and uh, uh, Impetus. Yes. Uh, and it was good to have Adam on the show today. Absolutely. Uh, you know, he and I have become friends a little bit behind the scenes. Um, naturally, we met at AHR for the first time as he put his sticker on our, our mechanical room wall, which will reside so proudly at our new facility when we open that up. And of course, once that happens, I'll you know send some photos and tag everybody who's on there because man, what a cavalcade of stars on that uh, signature uh, piece of cloth, I suppose, that has our logo on it. That was part of our booth build out, whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. We we were able to salvage that, and I was and I uh, we with some help of course um you know we we took all of the stickers off of it that we felt were not going to survive the trip and we put them inside of the catalog like a handy catalog so and i took a very um like a detailed slow video as to where those stickers were so we can, so we can put a little rubber cement on them and then affix them permanently we, we will use the no we don't want to breathe that shit in well like i mean purple glue no wait. no no well rubber cement is different than yeah PVC i was thinking glue. of maybe use pvc glue but that's dangerous to yeah, our lives no, no, of so course, we don't I want would, to do that. I would never no want to do that. No, of no. course. I will, I will be using non toxic. We would need respirators and all kinds of other crap. <laughs> all right, well. What just happened? I'm not quite sure, but we're back now. And um, hopefully this works. Uh, I think it should be okay, but now I'm going to be using two files, and it will. Uh, I'm not sure what happened there exactly. We we took a little pause t between certain segments here because we had some other other you know actual pressing we had an interview to do pr passing pipe pipe business to attend to. So I just had left the recording thing up for quite some time, and it decided that that was too long. So we did a little second uh, recording here to uh, to get the conclusion here, and um, so you we know we're talking about Adam and uh... yeah, I mean Adam that was a great interview, wide ranging. Um, I mean. You know, interesting guy, world traveler, uh, interesting resume, a lot of different interests, and sort of just very, a fun. Very close to Takeo Pumps, uh, yeah. kind of a yeah. uh, ambassador to, to Takeo. Sure. Maybe that's not um, the right word. But... Also, you know, incredibly down to earth and yeah, personable. Absolutely. I mean, you know, I, I, and one of the things, and again, I, we talked about this a lot in the interview, but it's certainly something that we, when we hear it, we, lo we love to hear it, and we hear it a lot maybe because of the people that we do invite on the show have kind of a similar situation. Um, I mean, he named many of the people who have been guests on this program. Yeah. Colin Sadler's been on this program. Mike Flynn. Ben Thompson has been on this program. Mike Flynn's been on this program. Ben Poole's been on this program. Um, who else did he say? Uh, we, need to get, we need to get Nample on this program. We, um, you know what? Well, that would be an interesting yeah, we should get him international him. guest. And we yeah. got to get the Vito's plumbing. Uh, absolutely. Well, we should on site, though. I'm going to be there next uh, week. On right? location. Uh, you should go find him. Uh, that'd be that's a ferry boat ride and yeah. a car ride, but it's not impossible. I mean, I'll see how much time I have. Reach out to him. I mean, you know, I meet me in the middle somewhere. Um, we've talked perhaps. about Kefalonia, and he lives in the city of Patra, which is sure, yeah, which is that's like where a ferry you, that's boat. where the that's where the fair that's where you got the rental car, right? That's exactly correct. Ah, uh, so it's not that far. It is not that far. That's would be interesting. And then, oh my goodness, it would be. Uh, I would hope you should go live with him perhaps if you could do that and some of I'd have to smoke a cigar with him because he's always smoking a cigar uh, you should of course when when in Patra you, you do, you as, the, you do as the Patrons do and he's a bourbon uh, drinker um, on top of well, it well there so. you have it uh, but part of that should be uh, how good is your technical Greek 
My technical Greek? Yeah, can, nah. can, you, can you talk HVAC in Greece? I in probably Greek? cannot. No? I mean, I could say boiler, I could <laughs> say venting, uh, but uh, that's... Look like how you say test port. Uh, yeah, that... Uh, Would you ha you'd have to describe it in a roundabout way. You'd have to be like, the pipe the, that the has the drain. The drain has... with the hole where you put in the probe. I'd have yeah. to explain it. How do you say it. appliance adapter? Uh, I don't know. Oh, my. So my technical Greek is not that good. <laughs> well, it's better than mine. It's uh, conversational <laughs> Greek. is okay. <laughs> So luckily, we don't have uh, installation instructions. Or for me, I can. I, Greek. Of course, I speak uh, maybe like three words of Greek, and uh, uh, do not read it or speak it at all. So the installation instructions are, are uh, still yeah, only only in English. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, but that would be interesting. Uh, he's I mean, a bit, he's a big boiler user. Yeah. He loves uh, rigid tools and Milwaukee tools. So are you passing through Patra to get there? I'm not actually. You're, you're going Athens to yeah, and Athens, flying. Kefalonia. Gotcha. You know, a little puddle jumper. Sure, sure. Yes, okay. yes. Uh, well, I mean. Never know. I mean, hey. Stranger uh, things have happened. I could tell them a lot of people from Patra vacation, maybe not in October, but they vacation to Kefalonia because it's the nearest island. Sure. So I may say, hey, I'm here, and he may shoot over. I don't that would know. be amazing. I mean, you should message him. You know, who yeah, well, I'll definitely message him. Yeah, you should. That would be, that'd be amazing. Um, yeah. uh, do it before you leave. Yes. So you could maybe bring him a shirt or a hat or something Ooh, like that. Ooh, that's a good idea. I like that. Yeah. I like yeah. it. Yeah, so uh, that would be fascinating. That'd be awesome. We'd film it, giving him, and then, oh my God, it'd be good international content. And we show our European sisters and brothers that we are how more, <laughs> how, how we're influential even on their continent. That's correct. <laughs> and we should actually, I will, I will engage uh, Bruno and yeah. see. Yeah, having some, Ample on the, on, the, on the podcast here would be pretty yeah. interesting. It'd be great. Uh, really, really nice guy. We're very lucky super to nice you know, spend some time with him at, in Frankfurt. His homeland. He His was homeland. so grateful. He was like, "Oh, thank you for coming to my homeland." You know, cetera, like, I, like we said when yeah. we were with Adam, I mean, you know, compared to the, the, his followership and, and we being in the U.S., yeah. right? He actually recognized this, which surprised the hell out of me. Which means he cares. He's plugged in. He's paying attention. Uh, it's not just a show thing. It, it is for sure. it's genuine. I mean, he likes and comments and stuff like that yeah, on, on our Instagram, our little you know dainty venting accessory line, you know, and he is. Uh, an international HVAC celebrity, you know, uh, you yeah. know, but it's amazing. A lot of a lot of these folks who we've still have amassed this following maintain um, a lot that humility and the still the 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 goal is professional and installation. And actually, that it's not, tie, tying I mean, it back, kind of a callback to our interview with uh, with Adam. You know, he mentioned how Mechanical Hub Eric, you know, was an influence to him you know, as he was getting into the trades, and how he looks forward to that. And that's really a nice thing with the. You know, HVAC community that, that it's like the circle of life. The circle right? of life. It's positive feedback loop. Yes. So, and I mean, it's really nice to hear that because it is the influence. Like Eric's influence on him helps Adam nurture the next generation type of thing, and then that person is going to remember his experience, and then hopefully continue that process in perpetuity, thus lifting up the trades as a whole, binding the community together, and really just you know elevating the technical elements, and you know focusing on the, on the craftsmanship, the professionalism, and the whole and the whole nine yards. Right. So really, really nice. It is. Um, so yeah, how about we uh, we wrap it up now, and uh, we'll you be all. back. We have a fun guest next month. We do. Um, we are scheduled with Mr. Roger Wakefield. A who, celebrity in, his own, you know, in right. his own right. One of our favorite people and one of the, uh, another person who fits in this mold. All he does is work to educate uh, plumbers and tradespeople. And, and also specifically about how to run a plumbing business. Yes. He does do some memes where he makes fun of electricians, which which is okay. Is pretty funny too. Yeah. Right? So, yeah, but it's all again all in good fun. I bet you that Roger is probably a very competent electrician himself. Uh, I am sure. Yeah, I bet you he knows what he's doing. He can change am, change a fuse sure. and you know we'll wire up. No, a, I, I, I'm sure line. more than changing you know. a fuse. <laughs> I'm gonna bring him up to the uh, to the new factory to, to yeah to we hook the extruder up for us. When we get into the new factory, we should bring him up. We absolutely. A will. And we do uh, have an announcement. Uh, about our social media event, the Squid Games. Well, that happened in the interview. Uh, oh, oh, next month, too. Yes, yes, yes. 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 But, but a little more, more detail. Well, we're going to be doing like the Hansel and Gretel thing coming up. Yeah. We, we drop little breadcrumbs little by little by little by little. We're, gonna, we're planning on doing a... You know, some Instagram live content with some people and saying hello and maybe um, surprising them on, live would be kind of funny. Yeah. I think it'd be pretty good. I mean, Adam took it, was a little shocked. Um, yes. So, you know, hey. But the time it was right. I it mean, was. He was it one was. of the handful of people that were selected. Uh, and I think the timing was pretty cool. Absolutely. To make that and, uh, you know, he, he would proudly be representing uh, Ontario yes. in uh, the Squid Games Part 2. 
down in South Beach, which uh, obviously more to come. And uh, we will be back again next month uh, with more podcast content. And so just, uh, you know, subscribe, like, share, uh, et cetera, et cetera, Push et cetera. it out to your friends. Make sure they watch. They'll learn about chocolate. Toma- Ita- special yeah. Italian tomatoes. A lot of candy talk this week. Uh, and, uh, you know, the uh, bunch of other good stuff. Indeed. Later, everybody.